The 2023 UCI Cross Country Mountain Bike World Cup took us on a journey across the globe, following the world's greatest athletes as they battled with the terrain, the elements and each other in pursuit of glory. The calendar consisted of eight events, kicking off in the Czech Republic, winding its way through Switzerland, Austria, Italy, Andorra and France, before heading across the ocean to the USA and Canada. Each UCI Mountain Bike World Series event is host to two cross-country World Cup races, XCC and XCO. The first is the XCC, the short track race. This short, sharp, aggressive race takes place at the opening of the weekend and also sets the starting order for the XCO race. XCO stands for Cross Country, the Olympic distance, and it's the marquee event of a race weekend. It's the ultimate test of endurance, tactics, and teamwork as the riders battle across the most challenging terrain. Winning an XCC or an XCO World Cup is an outstanding achievement that puts riders in a very small elite club. However, the absolute top tier of competitors are targeting something bigger. There is an overall title up for grabs for both XCC and XCO, with points gained from the season tallied up to decide who is the fastest, the strongest and the most consistent mountain biker in the world. Overall titles are the goal, but they aren't won in a single weekend. The journey has to start somewhere. The mountain bike world arrived in the Czech Republic for the opening event of the season. Novo Mesto Namorave is a classic event on the calendar. All the big names were looking to draw first blood. Reigning overall XCO champions Alessandra Keller and Nino Schurter were fit, focused and ready to defend their titles, while the likes of Tom Pitcock, Evie Richards and Pauline ferran Bravo were all out to upset the established order. First was the women's XCC. Alessandra Keller and Jenny Risford had a strong start before a crash involving Martina Berta mixed up the order. Lyra Steger kept pace with Keller and the two battled all the way to the line. Steger came out on top ahead of Keller, Sina Fry, Pauline ferran Bravo, and Evie Richards. The men's XCC kicked off and despite starting back in the pack, Tom Pidcock quickly made his way to the front. Lucas Schwartzbar also parred in the first place while a crash for Haverly caused chaos behind. Pidcock and Schwarzbar battled all the way through the final lap, but it was Pidcock who dug deepest on the final sprint to take the win ahead of Gaze, Schwarzbauer, Flugiger and Scherter. With the starting order set, the first XCO race of the season kicked off with the elite women. Puck Peterson in her debut season at elite level led the pack from the start before settling into the lead group. Evie Richards built a lead in the first half of the race, but was pegged back by a flat tyre. A disastrous tyre change let Peterse and Pauline ferran Bravo back into the race. The young Dutch woman kept pace with the multiple UCI world champion. The final lap was a battle as Peterse hunted ferran Bravo, and she finally made her move to take the lead. Timing her race to perfection, Peterse extended her lead over the final sections of the race and took a debut win in her first ever elite level XCO race, ahead of Ferran Prevo, Loanne Lecomte, Evie Richards and Alessandra Keller. In the men's XCO, Lucas Schwarzbauer powered away at the front and a lead group formed of Nino Scherter, Tom Pidcock, Matthias Lugiger and Joshua Dubo. Pidcock put the pressure on to take the lead and Schwarzbauer's early pace faded allowing the bow into the battle. Conditions were tough and Pidcock struggled to keep momentum before crashing to hand the lead to the bow. The young Frenchman put everything into staying ahead, but Pidcock was relentless. By the final lap, Pidcock was right on Dubot's tail. He finally made his move, and Dubot could only stay with him for so long. Pidcock took the win with style ahead of Dubot, and a photo finish put Nino Schurter in third ahead of Jordan Saru. Normally my start is really good, but we were going so fast and yeah, I thought I totally blew myself up, but it looked like the others did too, so uh, and then uh, yeah, Pauline and I were going in front of each other, kept going in front of each other and I think after a few laps uh, Evie had a flat or something and then I was suddenly racing uh, for the front and I didn't know what to do, but I just uh, tried to keep calm and it worked out. Fantastic, well done, congratulations. Thanks a lot. 
Uh, yeah, it was a crazy experience. Before the race, I didn't know what to expect because it was my first race between the elites. But yeah, it went uh, way better than, uh, than expected. So uh, yeah, really happy about that one. But also the way how you did it. I mean, uh, riding uh, bar to bar with uh, Pauline Fran Provo, uh, one of the, the biggest name in mountain biking, uh, world champion, uh, short track uh, world champion cross country. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, during the race, uh, I thought uh, that yeah she would have the, the upper hand because she has so uh, so much experience. But yeah, I'm yeah, maybe new in the elite field in the mountain bike. But yeah, I did a whole cross season, which was also uh, yeah sometimes uh, yeah quite uh, quite close in the end. So uh, yeah, I also knew my tactics and I knew luckily a bit what to do. Moving to the Swiss Alps for round two of the season, Lenzerheide was a home event for some of mountain biking's greatest stars. But Petersa picked up where she left off with a strong start in Lenzerheide alongside Austria's Lyra Steger. The lead changed hands multiple times with all of the big names taking their turn at the front. But Jenny Ruskvitz emerged to take the win ahead of Keller, Ferran Prevo and Petersa. In the men's race, it was another strong start for Lucas Schwartzbauer and Joshua Debeau was still riding high after his breakout performance in Nova Mesto Namarave. Jordan Saru made a move at the front of San Gaze, lost the front end, taking Nino Scherter with him. With chaos further back, Schwartzbauer took Saru and powered through the last lap to take his first win of the season in short track. The cross-country Olympic kicked off on Sunday with the women's event and Switzerland's Zena Fry led the pack through the start loop with the home support behind her. The technical course caused problems for many and young Loanne Lecomte made her move for the lead. Alessandra Keller also wanted to lead her home race but Lecomte kept in touch and was never far away. A battle between Lecomte and Ferran Prevo developed as Lecomte picked her moment to pull away from her fellow Frenchwoman. The comp took the win ahead of Terpstra and Keller with Ferran Bravo coming fourth and Peter Sif fifth. As the men's race rolled around, a historic moment was on the cards. Nino Scherer was on the edge of breaking Julian Absalon's record of 33 UCI World Cup wins. And with the home fans behind him, he was the man to beat. At the lights, it was again Saru and Schwartzbauer trading blows at the front, but Scherer was just behind. He nearly lost it over a rock, but held on to stay in touch. Ever the professional, he moved to the front of the pack and put his head down. He still couldn't escape Saru and his countryman Flukiger. But a mistake from Luca Brido also dampened Saru's hopes of a win. Scherer and Flukiger both broke away from the pack, but it was the man in front who had the motivation behind him. Scherer put the hammer down to pull ahead and never looked back. Saru made his way back into contention and battled Thomas Grillo all the way to the line. But all eyes were on Scherter as he crossed the line to make history. Frishy, wow, history making. Tell, tell me something. Uh, it's overwhelming, you know. He's been waiting for that day a long time and he was so close to celebrate this a year ago and uh, it couldn't be any better place than win this race just here in front of his home crowd. I, yeah, it's just, uh, gives me tears. You guys have had some epic, epic celebrations, some wins over the years. Does this top them all? I think so, I really think so. I, I truly believe this is his greatest win. Congratulations, well done, amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this one ranks for sure really high. Um, yeah, I'm not the youngest anymore and uh, I had years where I was like expecting for myself to win World Cups and now I know I need to have a perfect day. If everything comes together, I can still win, uh, but that makes it more, even more emotional and, and more, yeah, nicer in a way. And uh, yeah, it was, was really cool this, this victory and it ranks really high up in my <laughs> career highlights. Yeah, I think also the team uh, knows it's it's probably, yeah, some of, of my last uh, big, big uh, victories. And uh, I, I think that makes it for everyone even more emotional to know also it's, it's, it's going to an end. Yeah, for sure, Lente Heide is for me 
for me, every year was was and was this year is especially really special. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming from close close Lenze Heide, Lenze Heide, and I'm training often there, and uh, it's, it was always a, a special pli place for me. So maybe it had to happen now in Lenze Heide, it made it more, even more special. Yeah. After the first two rounds of the season, Alessandra Keller held a tight lead in the women's XCC standings for Thomas Maxson, while Lucas Schwarzbauer of Canyon Collective sat 100 points clear in the men's. In the XCO women's, Alpeson de Kerning's debutante Puck Peters is sat just nine points ahead of Luan Lecomte. Nino Scherter was already back at the top of the table for Scott Schramm after that record-breaking win. Going up after the break, the UCI Mountain Bike World Series heads on to round three in Leogang, Austria. The third round of the UCI Cross Country Mountain Bike World Series arrived in Leogang and all eyes were on the Austrian mountains as the sport's biggest names once again lined up to take on another brutal track in the searing summer heat. A home race for Mona Mitterwalner and Laura Steger as they look to upset the explosive debut season of Puck Peterson, while record-breaking Nino Schurer was at risk of a performance hangover after his landmark win in Lenzerheide. In the women's XCC, Peterson was immediately back at the front of the pack, alongside Steger, with the home support behind her. Once again, Pauline Ferran Bravo and Evie Richards were in the mix. Peterson worked hard, but Ferran Bravo proved too strong and took the win away from the young Dutchwoman. Evie Richards, Anna Terpstra, and Jenny Ristridge rounded out the top five. In the men's race, familiar faces led from the line in Alan Haverley, Joshua Defoe, and Lucas Schwarzbauer. Matthias Flugiger joined the lead group and traded places with Schwarzbauer and Jordan Saru. A late charge from Ian Sherman was beaten back by Saru to take the win ahead of Schwarzbauer and Blooms. When Sunday rolled around, the women's XEO was up first. All the familiar faces were in the lead group from the start, as Alessandra Keller and Evie Richards sought to make an early mark. Puck Peterson, however, was keen to get back to winning ways. Keller and Peterson battled hard, trading places through the start loop, but it was the young Dutchwoman who emerged on top. Once in front, Peterson got her head down and built a gap which increased minute by minute. Behind her, Lyra Steger and Jenny Riskwitz battled hard, elbow to elbow, lap after lap. This battle allowed Mina Mitterwalner into the fray, spurred on by the home crowd. She caught the back of the chasing group and made her way past Riskwitz and Steger. Nobody could touch Peterson though as she took the win ahead of Mitterwalder, Steger, Ristwitz and Lecomte. As the men lined up for the final race of the weekend, there was a familiar sight of Lucas Schwarzbauer who led the way from the line. Through the start loop, Pierre de Flamont became a new face at the front of the pack. However, Schwarzbauer made short work of him to take the lead. Lars Forster made his way in the chasing pack and Andre Sink took his chance at the front. Meanwhile, Matthias Flutiger made moves forward, eventually taking the lead from Schwarzbauer. However, on lap four, Flutiger picked up a puncture, which spelled disaster for the Swiss rider. His teammate Lars Forster was quietly riding into contention, and before long had caught the lead group. First, he dispatched Andre Sink, and before long, he was ahead of Schwarzbauer too. He crossed the line to take a win after an expertly paced race. Schwarzbauer came second, Sink third, Averley fourth, and Flugiger fifth after an epic recovery ride. Yeah, I had a pretty good start. Uh, I, I don't know the position, but I think around uh, 10th. And uh, I just felt good. But I, I told myself, wait, wait, it's, uh, it's hot today. It's a long race. Just uh, take, your, take your time. And then I, I was riding place further, place further. And I was thinking, yeah, maybe today I'm doing the five. And then in the third last, uh, yeah, I think when Mot Mot Matthias Flukiger had the flat tire, I overtook him. And uh, then I was thinking, okay, you are going for the win today. And then uh, last lap, I just, uh, I just, I knew from the second last lap, uh, I'm the strongest uphill, so I make the tempo ch just at the beginning and uh, push through from the oh, goosebumps. Last 500 meters to the finish, uh, I'm so happy. 
crossing the border into Italy, round four took place at the legendary Val di Sole, a favourite of Nino Schur. Could the greatest of all time write his name even further into the history books? And in the women's competition, Hope Peterson was also pushing the concept of just what a first-year elite athlete could be capable of. In the first race of the event, the women's short track, it was Puck Peterson who yet again started strongly. Evie Richards took the lead, but by the second lap, Peterson was back on top. A close call for Alessandra Keller caused problems in the pack, and Jenny Risfitz made her way through the order. Pauline Ferran Bravo caught the front of the pack before Keller put the power down and tried to build a gap to the rest of the group. She couldn't escape Peterson, though, who led a sprint through the final lap. Lyra Steger made a claim for the lead, but Peterson had the legs to stay with her. She put the power down as they sprinted for the line, but a photo finish confirmed it was Steger who took the win. Ferran Bravo came third, Keller fourth, and Risfiz was fifth. Moving on to the men's short track, it was the familiar sight of Schwarzbauer at the front. Joshua Dubow and Jordan Saru were always with him, and Dubow made his move first. The lead didn't last, and Nino Schurter entered the fray behind Schwarzbauer. Matthias Lukiger was also in touch, but Schwarzbauer managed to take the lead. The final lap was a drag race, with Schwarzbauer asserting his position early. Dubow was chasing him hard, but Schwarzbauer was just too powerful. He took the win ahead of Alan Haverley, Joshua Dubow, Pierre de Foimont and Yen Shermans. Sunday rolled around and for the women's XEO, Puck Peterson was once again in the lead group. Martina Berta was spurred on by the home crowd, but Peterson dispatched her early to take first place and to try to build the gap. Berta was valiantly holding off Pauline Ferran de Vaux, but the Frenchwoman eventually proved too strong and moved past Berta for second. That wasn't the end of the story though, as Berta stayed in touch and took her chance when Ferran Bravo crashed out. Behind Berta, Rebecca Henderson made a move stick on Lyra Steger to take third, but nobody could touch the young Dutch woman at the front. Puck Peterson continued her dominance with yet another win, followed by Berta, Henderson, Steger and Mettervalner. I decided to go for it from the start, and after one lap I was already a block, and then it was just uh, riding my own pace and trying not to fall back and uh, yeah it worked again so <laughs> it's apparently a good tactic you made a tiny mistake in that that final lap if i'm not mistaken yeah. how did you get back into that momentum after that yeah luckily i knew i had a big gap but uh, i think it was was yeah with the part before that one of the hardest parts of the race because you came almost to a standstill and then there were lots of roots uh, and every lap i was like okay focus here and then only the last lap, yeah, I was so high in my heart rate that I just couldn't keep up. But after that, I just tried to reset and uh, yeah, sprint up the next hill to get back in the momentum. As the men lined up, Jordan Saru was wearing the overall leader's jersey. He powered away from the line in an early lead. But as always, the lead group was a who's who of mountain bike powerhouses. Nino Schurter pulled in the lead, and Alan Haverley, Sam Gaze and Lucas Schwarzbauer managed to stay with him. Haverly and Schur are separated from the others and repeatedly traded places with a big gap back to the rest of the pack. Schurter then decided the time was right to attack and glided away from Haverly, whilst Matthias Flügiger made his way back into contention. He took Haverly to form a Swiss 1-2 as Haverly faded and allowed Vlad Descalu into third. Schurter took a commanding win ahead of Flügiger and Descalu just held off Joshua de Bull ahead of Haverly in fifth. At the halfway point of the season, the women's XCC overall standings were still close, with Pauline Ferran Bravo out in front for Ineos Grenadiers. Canyon Collectors Lucas Schwarzbauer, however, had extended his lead to 180 points. While in the women's XCO, Puck Peters' outstanding start to the season for Alpes and de Kerdic had her 296 points ahead of the reigning UCI world champion Pauline Ferran Bravo. In the men's XCO, Scotch Rams Nino Schurter was still on top, but Jordan Saru was close behind, despite having not yet won a race. Coming up after the break, the UCI Mountain Bike World Series heads to Round 5 in Pal Aronsal, Andorra. Halfway through the UCI Cross Country Mountain Bike World Cup season, the history books had already been blown wide open. 
In the women's first year elite, Puck Peterson had taken the mountain bike world by storm, winning three of the first four XEO World Cups. With two podium finishes in XCC, also to her name, she was emerging as a real force in both overall title races, going bar to bar with the likes of UCI triple world champion Pauline ferran -Bravo. In the men's XCC, it was all about Lucas Schwarzbauer, with the powerful German muscling his way to the top of the standings with two wins and two podium finishes. Whilst in the XEO, it was a Nino Scherter show, as the greatest of all time continued to break records and show the world what's possible on a mountain bike. Jordan Saru was in second place across both disciplines, showing strength and consistency. Round 5 of the season brought the UCI Mountain Bike World Series to pal Aaron Salandora without at a monstrous 2,000 vertical metres above sea level. Friday night brought the women's XCC to open the weekend and as ever there were familiar faces at the front. The Wanala Comp took an early lead but Alessandra Keller was not far away and took the lead heading into the second lap. Evie Richards was always present and looking for her first win of the season. Puck Peterson was buried in the pack, but the young Dutch woman soon resumed normal service and joined the chase for the lead. Keller put the hammer down to try and separate from the pack, and only Richards could stay with her. The Swiss rider, however, was too strong and took the win ahead of Richards, Peterson, Bertha, and Anna Terpstra. The men's XCC kicked off and once again Lukas Schwarzbauer and Jordan Saru led the pack away from the line. Nino Scherter and Joshua Dubow were trading places, but there was nothing to separate the front five. Matthias Flukiger also joined the battle, settling in behind Schwarzbauer. The front four of Schwarzbauer, Flukiger, Saru and Scherter stuck together through the final laps, but the powerful German got his elbows out and held on to the lead. In the final sections of the race, Scherter attacked for the win and it came down to a drag race with Schwarzbauer. The German was too powerful, however, and he took the win ahead of Scherter, Saru, Haverley and Flukiger. Come Sunday in Andorra, the heavens opened, and the women lined up for the cross-country Olympic. Martina Berta and overall points leader Puck Peterson led away from the line, but reigning world champion Pauline ferran Bravo attacked and built a huge lead in the early stages. Alessandra Keller refused to give up and slowly but surely reined her in and eventually made the French woman pay for her explosive early laps. Ferran Provo continued to fade as Mona Mitterwalder, the young Austrian, rode her way into contention. Conditions were tough, but Mona battled through to reach Keller to take the lead. Mitterwalder never looked back and took the win ahead of Keller, Ferran Provo, Lecomte and Richards. It, it means so much to me. I mean, it took me a long time. It feels like ages and I know I'm just 21, but it's just so many races where something went wrong or it just didn't come together. And today everything finally came together. I mean, uh, the hardest race I think I've done so far in the mud, in the cold, in the rain. I mean, uh, I just didn't know what I could do today, but um, yeah, I just kept believing and now finally it came true. For sure it was one of the toughest races I've ever done. The other riders really pushed me to my absolute limit. I never settled for a second. Uh, I was on the gas all the time because I knew in the first lap if the front has gone too much, I'm not, I, I won't be able to win it. So all I was thinking was every ride I passed, I was like, I'm not waiting, I'm not waiting. I'm just go, go, go. I have to invest now because in the last lap, I know I'm strong anyway. So, but once I won it, I knew why I'm doing all of that why I'm doing, putting in every day 110% of my performance and I'm really living for this sport 26 hours a day. <laughs> so yeah, just this crossing the finish line, I knew why I'm doing it. For sure, the new generation has arrived. I mean, a lot of young riders are reaching for that top spot and are in the top 10 constantly. Um, but. I am also aware that the old generation <laughs> is not gone yet and we have also some strong and stable riders there and I think the final three World Cups now will be a big, big fight um, and I'm really excited who can hold the level we have been riding all year. Conditions continue to worsen for the men's XCO but that didn't stop the sparks flying. Lukas Schwarzbauer and Matthias Lukiger were the initial standout leaders, 
while Nino Schurer caught an early puncture, leaving him to fight back through the pack. Flukiger gained a slight lead, but Schwarzbauer was always there. Jordan Saru and Tom Adrio joined the battle as Flukiger extended his lead. Schwarzbauer's early effort began to show as Grio and Saru moved past him, before Tom Pidcock also made his way out of nowhere to fourth place. On the final lap, Grio had closed the gap, but Flukiger stayed strong. Pidcock closed in on Saru and overtook for third, as Flukiger took the win ahead of Grio, Pidcock, Saru and Schwarzbauer. Next up was round six in Léger, France. The host of last year's UCI World Championships, the resort was primed with an incredibly tough track passionate fans and strong potential for homegrown heroes to kick things into overdrive. The women's XCC began with Puck Peterson and Martina Berta yet again leading the group from the start. With Pauline Ferran Bravo missing due to illness, Luan Lecomte took on the mantle of hometown hero and looked to build a lead. Puck Peterson, Alessandra Keller, Evie Richards and Martina Berta, however, would not back down and traded places at the front. Jenny Risfits joined the battle, but a mistake from Keller knocked her down the order. Keller, Peterson and Richards broke away, but it was Puck Peterson who took her first short track win of the year, followed by Richards, Keller, Hilly Batten and Lecomte. The men lined up and it was Alan Haverley and Lucas Schwarzbauer who took a familiar lead. Schwarzbauer's early pace took a toll as Viktor Koretsky reached the front group after starting in 32nd place. Koretsky attacked and joined by Joshua Debo made a break for the lead. He traded places with Schwarzbar through the descent in Rock Garden and made a final push into the climb on the last lap. Saru also made the most of the climb and a mistake from Thomas Litcher on the final quarter ruined his chances of a podium finish. A French 1-2 with Koretsky and Saru followed by Schwarzbauer, Shermans and Blooms. The sun continued to shine on Sunday as the women lined up for the cross-country Olympic and the first laps were business as usual with Puck Peterson, Luan Lecomte and Alessandra Keller swapping the lead. Hayley Batten was in contention at her first race after coming back from a big concussion but Puck Peterson dominated the early stages. Polly Ferran Bravo made an uncharacteristic error in front of her own fans. And Mona Mitterwalder was on a steady charge up the order. The two young stars, Mitterwalder and Petersen, were chased by the living legend Ferran Bravo, but it was Mitterwalder who attacked first. Batten challenged Ferran Bravo for third, while Mitterwalder put her head down and extended her lead. Ferran Bravo made third back on the last lap, powered on by the home crowd, but Mitterwalder took a second win on the bounce ahead of Petersen, while Batten and Blunk rounded out the top five. The men then took their place on the start line and as Saru led, a crash in the mid-pack caused chaos. Nino Scherer made up over 25 places on the first straight after starting way back in the pack and before long was back in the lead group. Schwarzbar and Saru had pushed too hard too soon and fell back, while Scherer made his way to the front. He battled with Viktor Koretsky and Joshua Dubo, but Koretsky had the home fans behind him and powered away. Disaster then struck for Scherter as he picked up a rear puncture, giving him an absolute mountain to climb. Scherter, however, made experience count and made up the 30 odd seconds he lost to come back to second place. But it was all about the home hero, Viktor Koretsky, taking the double XCC and XCO win. Vlad Descalu finished third, Garini fourth, and Dubo fifth. What dreams are made of. Your second win this weekend in Leger in front of a fantastic crowd. Yeah. Could you ask so much more than that today? Yeah, it's I don't know, it's amazing. It was not my my goal to 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 be alone on the front, but I was in a good shape and, and then uh, it was easier to to just uh, uh, push my pace and just uh, try to be the most uh, regular as possible. Especially on the technical, on the technical part. Sorry, I have the. <laughs> and um, yeah, on the forest, it was uh, easier for me to, to push a little bit more compared to the guys be left behind on, of me. So yeah, I, I, I was so happy. I'm so happy. Thanks a lot for our French crowd. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Vous me faites chaud au cœur. Je suis beaucoup ému. Merci à vous et. Je crois que j'oublierai jamais ce week-end de ma vie. Merci beaucoup.
absolutely love you. How dangerous can you be now with this confidence from this weekend? <laughs> uh, to, to win in one week, it's amazing. In France, in front of my family, in front of my French crowd, uh, I can't believe it. I don't know, it was a, a dream week for me and I'm super happy. Um, uh, I can't believe it, thanks a lot. After six incredible rounds of mountain bike action, the absolute standout performer was the young Dutch woman Puck Petersen, taking the top spot in the XCC overall standings ahead of the reigning overall UCI World Cup champion and the reigning UCI World Champion was a huge achievement in itself. But she was now leading the XCO overall standings ahead of a similarly competitive field. In the men's XCC, Lucas Schwartzbauer was still out in front ahead of Jordan Saru. But in the XCO, Nino Scherer was being reined in by his countryman, Matthias Flukiger. Coming up after the break, it's the business end of the season, with the four cross country mountain bike overall titles yet to be decided. To win an overall UCI Mountain Bike World Series title is an extremely difficult feat. Riders must be the fastest across all terrain no matter what the elements throw at them and they must do this week after week after week. Coming into the final two rounds of the series, the overall title battles were finally poised with XCO and XCC titles on the line for both elite men and elite women's disciplines. First up, the wilds of West Virginia played host to a challenging track at the Snowshoe Mountain Resort. The women's short track was first, and with a long sprint to start the lap, it was a familiar front group. Overall points leader Puck Peterson was in the mix, but it was Loanne Lecomte who led the early stages. On lap two, Evie Richards staked her claim for the lead, put the power down and never looked back. She crossed the line to take her first win of the season, ahead of Peterson, Henderson, Keller and Lecomte. The men's race points leader Luca Schwartzbauer powered away from the line, but Viktor Koretsky was riding high after his double win in Leger and overtook Schwartzbauer as they came into the second lap. Lino Scherer and Jordan Saru made up the front four and the group traded places as they pushed on. Schwartzbauer and Saru were the front two, but on the final lap, Charlie Aldridge made a break from fifth and Koretsky followed. Schwarzbauer briefly made it back to the lead, but before Koretsky attacked again, Saru also made a pass Schwarzbauer, but nobody could touch Koretsky in the lead, and he took the win ahead of Saru, Schwarzbauer, Descalu, and Aldridge. Next up was the Women's Cross Country Olympic, and all eyes were on Puck Peterson, the young Dutch woman who could secure the overall title in this race. Peterson started strongly along with Lara Steger and Martina Berta and Luana Lecomte joined the group to form a front four. Rebecca Henderson joined the fight as Berta put the pedal to the metal, but any lead was short-lived as the elite women battled at the front. Steger managed to work a gap to the rest as Berta's early efforts took their toll. Steger took top honours ahead of Lecomte, Berta, Blunk and Neff, but it was all about Puck Peterson who finished in sixth, enough to secure her the UCI Cross Country Olympic World Cup title for 2023. The final race of the weekend was the Men's Cross Country Olympic and it was the young Scotsman Charlie Aldridge who led the first few quarters. Victor Koretsky and Lucas Schwartzbauer quickly made up ground, while Jordan Saru and Tom Pidcock also joined the fray. Marcel Garini also joined the front group and the lead changed hands rapidly. Pidcock charged forward, but was rewarded with a front flat tyre which pegged him back. Schwarzbauer also suffered a flat tyre which handed the lead to Saru, but the Swiss pair of Garini and Nino Scherer were hot on his tail. Garini made the first move, followed quickly by Scherer, but Garini was spent and Scherer pulled away on the final climb. Saru was still in touch and hunted the Swiss legend to the very end. At the very death, he found the outside line and took Scherer for first place and the win. Garini held on the first, ahead of Flukiger and Pidcock. 
With the women's XEO overall title already wrapped up, there was still a battle for second place at the final round in Mont and Canada. But there was also three other overall titles yet to be decided. I'm really happy that I already got the overall last weekend. It uh, takes some pressure off. Um, for myself, it's, uh, yeah, it sinks in uh, bit by bit more. Uh, I'm just now, yeah, I can really enjoy. I'm always enjoying, of course, but it's really more relaxed uh, this weekend. Um, and then from the outside, of course, all the people in my close circle were, uh, were really happy. I think for everyone, it's, it's been uh, quite a long season. Um, longer than last year, I think. Um, I'm just happy that like in the first elite season, I could be this constant and even if the short track title, maybe yeah, we don't know what uh, tomorrow brings, of course. Uh, yeah, I'll still get second or third in there at least. So that still uh, would still be like yeah, the great performance, of course. First up was the women's XCC, and the two contenders were Alessandra Keller and Puck Peterson. Peterson was in pole position and only needed to finish above Keller to take the XCC overall title. Keller started stronger, staying in touch with Rebecca Henderson, who took an early lead. Peterson wasn't far behind, but Keller knew she had to stay ahead, so put everything into staying in front. The energy she'd spent early on proved to be her undoing, however, as Peterson attacked and overtook. The Waddle of Comte, Rebecca Henderson and Haley Batten were trading places at the front, as Keller dropped even further back into the pack. Lyra Steger pushed ahead Lily Group and attacked the final lap taking the win ahead of the Comte, Henderson and Richards. Fifth for Puck Peterson was enough to secure the overall XCC title. A crowning achievement and a historic season for the young Dutchwoman. That result locked in a historic achievement for Puck Peterson and Alpeson de Kerdick, adding the XCC overall title to the XCO title she secured at the last round. Last year's overall winner Alessandra Keller finished in second, followed by Evie Richards, Lyra Steger and Jenny Risfitz. 2023 overall World Cup Series champion. Not the race you wanted to finish on, but tell us about it. Oh, it was so hard. Uh, I just didn't have anything uh, left in the legs, I think. Oh, from the first lap, uh, I felt that my legs were really heavy and every time on the climb, the girls could punch a lot. Uh, so in the beginning, I just uh, decided to stay with Alessandra a lot. Yeah, I gave everything I had. You gave everything you had, you gave everything you've had all season. How does it feel to come away with the overall? Good. <laughs> I'll let it sink in uh, tonight and tomorrow a bit and then uh, try to focus uh, on one more uh, time to go full gas. Well, the first World Cup Series overall, congratulations, mate. Thanks. The men's XCC title was also on the line with Schwarzbauer and Saru locked in a two way fight. From the line, nothing could separate the two, and as Vlad Descalu pulled into the lead, they traded places behind. Koretsky was buried in the pack, but progressed well to meet the lead group, and while Schwarzbar and Saru dueled for position, Koretsky attacked. Positions were swapped and swapped again throughout the closing stages, but on the final lap, Koretsky emerged in front to take a third consecutive XCC World Cup win. Saru came second, but it was not enough to overcome Schwarzbauer's lead in the overall standings. Schwarzbauer did enough to lock up the title for Canyon Collective in a season where he was always the man to beat. Saru, Debeau, Shermans and Nino Scherer rounded out the top five. Luca, World Cup Series overall champ. The calculations are in and you did it this time. Tell us about it. Well, wow, today was a super tough right from the beginning on. And um, as expected, I could not get the overall out of my mind. That's why I kept on push, kept on pushing, but for sure towards the end, I am so empty. Amazing, mate. Well done. Congratulations. 2023 World Cup Short Track Overall Champion. Thank you very much and uh, thank you to everybody at home. Thanks to the team. I will definitely have the chance to mention that uh, gratefulness again, but for the moment, finito. Sunday brought the final women's XCO race of the season, and with the title already secured by Puck Peterson, it was all about the battle for second, with six riders all in the fight. As the rain fell, Peterson was not content to sit on her laurels, and powered to the front. The Juan Lecomte picked up her rear flat, which looked like disaster for the French rider, but she made the most of the conditions, and before long was back inside the leaders. Peterson began to slow, 
and after a season like hers, who could blame her? The Comte and Jenny Riskwoods broke away, but it was the Comte who dealt with the conditions the best. Peterson closed the gap after Risford's crash, but there was no catching the Comte. The young Frenchwoman took the win ahead of Risford's, with Peterson taking third. With a clean sweep of the overall titles already secured for Puck Peterson, that win for Luana Le Comte of Canyon Collective meant she secured second place from Lyra Steger and Alessandra Keller. Congratulations, what a race, it had everything. You had a flat tyre, you had a crash, but you came out unscathed with a smile on your face. How are you feeling? It's a very surprise, so I know I, I was um, in good shape, so I didn't know how the race um, will be because in this condition it's uh, totally crazy, so yes, I'm very happy and thanks to all the mechanics of the team for, for their jobs. With this result, you've also secured the second place in the overall, so what does that mean to you? I didn't know because uh, I missed uh, one World Cup, so the overall was uh, second goal, but uh, yes, it's, it's cool. <laughs> The men's XEO title was still very much up for grabs and it was shorter in the lead, but a poor result would open the door for Saru, Schwarzbauer and Flukiger close behind him. Rain continued to fall, but as ever it was Schwarzbauer who powered away from the line. In the early stages, Flukiger emerged as the leader, but was pegged back by a rear flat tyre. A quick change had him back in the race, but in the meantime, Tom Pidcock had inherited the lead. Meanwhile, Scherter and Saru were struggling way back in the pack, some furry places behind the leaders. Flukiger was quickly back behind the new UCI world champion, and with the motivation of a title on the horizon, he pushed on ahead. The misery continued for the Swiss rider, with a second rear flat cutting his pace and forcing him to watch as Pidcock glided past. It took two flat tyres to take the win away from Flugiger, but Pidcock had fought hard to take a second cross-country Olympic UCI World Cup win of the season. Flugiger came second after a heroic effort, but it would not be enough. A mechanical hit shorter finished in 14th, but that was all he needed to secure yet another UCI World Cup overall title. That result for Flukiger wasn't quite enough to take the top step in the overall away from Nino Scherter. Jordan Saru did just enough to hold on to second place in the standings as Nino Scherter celebrated his record-breaking ninth overall UCI World Cup title. What a race and with that result Nino Scherter claims his ninth overall title and it was a close call especially with that chain disaster at the end. Yeah, it was a really close call. First, I had a really bad start. I couldn't really go hard the first climb up, and uh, then I was stuck in the first downhill and ended up in 31st, I think so. Well, and then I chased back and chased back, and I saw Matthias is leading. Oh, I need to at least get 13th. Oh, and then my chain started to drop. My chain uh, holder was broke, and uh, yeah, it was a drama. But yeah, really happy with winning my ninth overall. Uh, super happy about the whole season, how it went, it was, uh, it's incredible, yeah. What happens now? Off season? Uh, now I need really some rest. It was, uh, it was a tough uh, uh, last part of the season, so now I'm looking forward to some rest and holidays. You've been brilliant to watch, well done. Thank you. Since like baby, I've been joining forces with the likes of an A-team. Jumping off of buildings used to be so stimulating. Now I'm reaching new heights. I'ma need the off-white. I'm sick of your talking, you got the wrong one. I'm taking your king and I leave him broke. If I am in second, it's after no one. Just give me a second to let him know. I 